President of Cuba, Miguel Díaz Canel, appealed for understanding and solidarity in the face of destabilization attempts against the Caribbean country. In Colombia, the special jurisdiction for peace indicted two colonels and 13 military personnel for 127 murders and 120 forced disappears in the Caribbean region. Heavy rains ravaged areas of Germany and Belgium on Thursday, destroying buildings with more than 30 people losing their lives in the natural disaster. Hello, welcome to From the South. I am Janet Perez Moya from the Telesur Studios in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. President of Cuba, Miguel Díaz Canel, appealed for understanding and solidarity in the face of destabilization attempts against the Caribbean country. The Cuban head of state referred to the fact that the current situation is complex due to the different contextual elements involved and demands the determination of the Cubans to overcome these difficulties. Díaz Canel also reiterated that the country is facing a slander campaign as a result of a massive media campaign. The president highlighted that in the midst of this situation, the Abdala results emerge as the first vaccines against COVID-19 in Latin America, which allows Cuba to take one more step in its successful fighting against the virus. Cubans react to the new measures adopted by the Iceland government to improve the living conditions of the population and address the Iceland economic problems exacerbated by the pandemic and the blockade imposed by the United States against the country. There is a great need for medicine, food and hygiene items in order to ease the situation we are in at the moment, which is not easy at all and is quite complicated. I believe that President Miguel Díaz Canel is making very good choices. At this time, these measures are very good. They benefit the people and shed light on the economic situation in the country. The riots in Cuba were promoted from Miami following the soft cop script step by step, present demonstrations as peaceful, but uh, with clear instructions to attack the forces of order, disturb the public tranquility. We present some videos that give us some ideas about this. Vamos a atacar los hoteles, las tiendas, estaciones policías, a los, a los carros policías que usted puedan derribar, que puedan tumbar, que puedan eso. Denle en candela, pero en el medio de la calle. Pinchenle la goma también. Porque tú que estás sentado ahora en tu casa, quizás lo que necesitas es una chispita para salir, para hacer video. Y producto a ese video, a esa, a esa motivación que tú tienes, la otra persona que te ve tu video, que te ve en la calle, se motiva y lo hace y es una cadena. Tienen que también para los hoteles, para hoteles, hoteles en todos los hoteles, a robarla, a destruirla, de a de todo eso. A todo eso. Aero, botella con lubriante, si antes. A ver lubriante o con petróleo antes o lo que puedan conseguir, no con molotov. Con, lugo, con con mechones, ustedes hacen esos mechones y se tiran por la noche. Vamos a bloquear las calles, vamos a sacar los tanques de basura, vamos a tirarlo para afuera. Yo y más de 80 personas más, el propósito es entrar a Cuba y provocar que el mundo, que las personas correctas que tienen que ver las cosas lo vean y vean que no estamos jugando, vean que queremos una, un cambio, la libertad para Cuba, porque no queremos que se quede en política, no queremos que pasen los meses y el tiempo y todavía Díaz Canel siga ahí con su política. The Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ralph Gonzalez, shows his solidarity with Cuba in regards to the events that took place in the island 
an issue and a statement of Cuba's remarkable and heroic revolution. The Prime Minister said that the protests in Cuba, which were fueled by unlawful imperialist economic sanctions, bring into focus the remarkable achievements of the Cuban people and their revolution, despite the monumental challenge and highlighted the island's milestone of producing at least two vaccines against COVID-19. He rejected the attempt of certain forces who seek to make the Cuban people prisoners of presidential and senatorial politics of Florida. President of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro, denounced that the recent destabilization attempts against the country were planned by opposition sectors from Spain. The president referred to the fact that political differences with the Venezuelan opposition may exist, but it does not justify it that they conduct the unfinanced sanctions of violence and terrorism, which have been fully proven from the city of Madrid. The head of state state and recalled that Attorney General's office has evidence and convincing reports of the participation of the opposition fugitive Leopoldo Lopez and other extremists in the paramilitary criminal acts carried out in the neighborhood of Caracas. In this sense, he instructed Foreign Minister Jorge Arreaza to present to the Spain's Foreign Minister to disclose the evidence of the participation of the opposition leader in the actions of violence and deaths committed by criminal gangs. We will take a short break now, don't go away. Welcome back. In Colombia, the Special Jurisdiction for Peace indicts two colonels and 13 military personnel for 127 murders and 124 such disappearance in the Caribbean region. The Justice Institution has indicted for war crimes and crimes against humanity and other 15 members of the army belonging to the La Popa Battalion in Valledupar. The Special Jurisdiction for Peace found once again patterns of macro criminality in the actions of the army and alliance with paramilitary groups in order to attract innocent young men and kill them so as to present them as guerrillas and thus manipulate the figures of deaths in combat. Haitian National Police uh, move forward in the investigation of the assassination of Juvenal Moise with the participation of the U.S., FBI, and other foreign experts. The director of the National Police of Haiti, Leon Charles, said that the investigation is well advanced and explained the degree of relationship between those already captured and those who are still fugitive. He also informed that in the recent two hours, two personals were detained, identified as Gilbert Dragon and Reynaldo Corbenton. This brings the total number of detainees to 23, of which 18 are Colombians and five are Haitians. He also stated that contrary to what has been reported by the international media, the information gathered so far does not reveal any link between the Haitian Prime Minister Claude Joseph and the crime. In Brazil, the medical team treating President Jair Bolsonaro at the hospital in Sao Paulo decided to reform a conservative clinical treatment to deal with the intestinal obstruction he is suffering. In a communique, the medical center informed that after carrying out several tests and evaluations, emergency surgery was ruled out. However, it stressed that all possibilities remain open. Bolsonaro, who has undergone several surgeries after being stabbed in 2018, will remain hospitalized without a discharge date which will depend on his evolution. The governor of Argentina decreed five days of national mourning in the honor than more than 100,000 deaths resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. Through a national decree, the government expressed its solidarity with the pain that society is going through for all the people who have been victims of the pandemic. The country reached on Wednesday the figure of one 100,250 deaths from the disease, with more than 4 million reported infections since the pandemic began on March 2020. In IT, the head of presidential security, Dimitri Herard, is expected to testify at the prosecutor's office to clarify his actions during the assassination of President Juvenal Moïse. According to the prosecutor's Bedford Claude, who is in charge of the investigation of assassinations, two other members of the presidential security should have testified already this Tuesday. However, those summoned did not show up, since they are still waiting for the general inspection 
of the police to respond to the request presented by the prosecutor's office to issue the permits required by the members of the security corps to testify. More stories coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back. Regen floods caused by heavy rains ravaged areas of Germany and Belgium on Thursday, destroying buildings with more than 30 people losing their lives in the natural disaster. After homes were severely damaged or in some cases sweep away, local residents started to clean up the debris and rebuild some normality. Emergency workers, meanwhile, continue to assess dust still trapped and look for possible injured persons. Authorities use inflap boats and helicopters the German army deployed 200 soldiers to assist in the rescue operation. The R is a tiny stream, you know. It usually only comes up to 50 to 60 centimeters. A completely harmless river. Nothing. Really, that's why people were taken by surprise. It is four, five times as much water in its current state. And last night was just madness. The bridge was pulled up, still in time. You can pull up the footbridge over there. We got to safety, but then something between 8 and 12 cars came floating down the R, and at some point the bridge was gone. The European Union released uh, the ground war for its transformation to combat climate change. The plan aims to help achieve the goals of reducing at least 55% of the carbon emissions by 2030. To this end, the European Union bloc of 26 countries will gradually introduce environmental requirements on automobiles that will promote the phase out of gasolines and diesel engineered models from 2035 onwards. The plan also includes a proposal to gradually tax fuel use on flights within the European Union starting in 2023 with the aim of forcing a reduction in emissions in the sector. Machihido Moeti, World Health Organization Africa Regional Director, said Thursday that COVID-19 cases are rising steeply in Africa have an increase by 1 million in a month and warned that some hospitals across the continent of 1.3 billion people are now at the breaking point. Over the past month, Africa recorded an additional 1 million cases. This is the shortest time it's taken so far to add 1 million cases. Comparatively, it took around three months to move from 4 million to 5 million cases. This COVID-19 resurgence is the fastest a continent has seen. New cases have increased for the eighth consecutive week and 18 African countries are now in resurgence. The Delta variant, which is currently the most transmissible of all the variants, has been detected in 21 countries in Africa. There is a consistent upward trend in 12 countries with sharp increases in some such as Algeria, Malawi, Senegal and Zimbabwe. The government of Sudan requests international mediation to conduct negotiations for the Grand Renaissance Dam, which is being built in the territory of Ethiopia, where it crosses the Nile River. The Sudanese Minister of Irrigation urged the United States government and the UN Security Council to intervene at the negotiation table over the dispute share of the dam project. The Sudanese officials referred to the talks he held with the European Union envoy for the Horn of Africa, Annette Weber, on the Grand Renaissance Dam crisis and reiterated his country's position in calling for an, an effective mechanism to maintain the negotiations between Sudan, Ethiopia and Egypt. In this regard, he warned about the growing tension generated by Ethiopia and its unilateral moves without reaching a prior agreement. In Afghanistan, the Taliban movement on Thursday urged the government to declare a three-month ceasefire. The spokesman for the Afghan government delegation in negotiations with the Taliban, Nader Naderi, announced the proposal and added that the exchange, the demand of the relief of 7,000 militants of the moment who were previously captured. The press conference was held before a meeting in Kabul on Thursday for the delegation of 11 Afghan politicians to travel to Doha to continue negotiations. The talks, which have been in progress since September 2020, have been erupted several times and were recently resumed. 
Olympics chief Thomas Bach said Thursday that Tokyo Games antivirus rules are working as the Japanese capital record its highest number of new infections since January. We and the Olympic community here wanted to contribute to the safety of these games and we want to avoid any kind of risk ever possible for the people of Tokyo and the people of Japan. We are now eight days from the opening ceremony and thanks to the efforts of so many, but in particular the people of Tokyo and the main unsung heroes from Tokyo, the medical people, the nurses and so many others, but also all the people of Tokyo who are respecting the strict rules which have been established here in order to contain the virus. We have come to the end of this news brief. You can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. For Telesur English, I am Janet Perez Moya. Thank you for watching.